Good morning. Dear mom, dad, and family, I'm writing to you to express my feelings, perspectives, and suggestions for my future as you'll be with me throughout this journey. As you know, racism has been brought up in multiple conversations within our home or in environments where black people are present. I'm very thankful for all of you, especially the ones in my house, making sure I know not only the good, but also the ugly about my race and culture and how it is viewed by the world. The Black Lives Matter movement, along with police brutality, has presented different perspectives from both the white and black lens. I'm grateful for movements that have started, such as the Civil Rights Movement and the Black Lives Matter Movement, or BLM. Black Lives Matter was a decentralized political and social movement advocating for nonviolent and civil injustices in protest against in incidents of police brutality and all racially motivated violence against black people. It started by three younger women in 2013 named Alicia Garza, Patrice Colors, and Opal Tamidi after the death of Trayvon Martin seven months earlier. Their impact caused an international, their movement caused an international impact on people to understand the injustices of black lives. The Black Lives Matter movement does not belong to anybody. It is used by both BIPOC community members and non-BIPOC community members to support and bring awareness to discrimination and anti-black racism. I am proud of my family for creating this space for me and being my outlet when to, when to discuss any topic and allow our host to be an environment of open and honest conversations to take place. But I'm also sorry you have to bring up two black children in this world we live in today. I plan to do what I can to make this world better when it comes to acting against racism. This may just look like informing a friend, child, coworker, adult, etc. To help me grow and to be able to transfer these life lessons, I would like for us to continue our conversations that we are having. Even though these aren't the conversations you want to have with your young child, I feel these conversations help not only me, but you as well. Dad, I applaud you and thank you for being continuously open, a reliable ally, and understanding that my upbringing will never be the same as yours. This must not be easy to know your little girl is viewed in different is viewed differently in some spaces before they even get to know the true me. Though your advice on racism and discrimination is not going to be from a personal experience, I know whatever you tell me is in my best interest and out of unconditional love. Mom, I also thank you. I know you're probably faced with multiple emotions knowing this is the world you're bringing your child into but you're a great role model as a woman and a black person. The long conversations you have with others or even firsthand situations in a Sobeys, a London Jewelers, a Cleves Sporting Goods, or even the provincial school system where you're racially profiled. I know this is tiring for you, but you must know the conversations you have with me and other children are necessary. I thank you for never giving up on me and including me in these important conversations to help me, your little girl, during these tough times and adding this knowledge to my toolkit to cope in the years to come. And although he may not understand, I will always let Evander know he is loved no matter what skin color he is. Being a younger kid, I never thought this is the world I'd come into. It blows my mind that just because someone has a darker skin tone, we're immediately labeled from the moment we walk into a room. Lazy, uneducated, threatening, aggressive, thug, not successful, and upon many more judgments are made. Having messages sent to you that say, we will take a young boy's life for being suspicious as he walks home, because he looks like me. I'm sad to know my world needs to see black lives continuously lost for over 400 years to become more aware that something is wrong here. Not sure why, but George Floyd's death was the wake-up call the non-BIPOC people needed. Though tragic, I'm sure others are happy to see there has been movement and, and changes happening to include us as human beings that are worth it, such as Brianna's Law, where no-knock warrants are now illegal and body cameras must be born in Louisville. 
All great, but certainly not the end for us as people. Our jobs aren't done. Defunding was also a topic brought into the solution-based brainstorm. Though I agree the police have been given a lot or even too much control and power in certain situations, we know the time we live in is not ready for a world without police. So, as people, especially the ones who are most affected by injustice acts, we should come together and think of a positive, sustainable strategies to help our communities reroute their money to enhance their own communities that have been attached to inequities or lower income slash poverty. In situations like this, thinking smarter is very important. So, in closing, to you, my family, I appreciate you. You continue to teach, tell, show, and prepare me for this world in rough and unfair times. Our world is not perfect, nor where it should be when it comes to races coming together and eliminating injustices. But, as a family, all I ask of us is to keep this anti-racist and justice movement topic alive. Do our part. Do not be afraid to inform others on the rights and the wrongs. I want Evander and my generation to be comfortable enough and to be open with her thoughts and be valued and optimistic for positive change no matter what the tone of our skin. Thank you.